Blessed be the time that binds our hearts in Christian love. us 
by faith to hope's true promised land. Be thou our guide. With thee to bless the darkness shines as light, and faith's fair vision changes into sight. unknown, we follow Thee. When we are strong, Lord, leave us not alone, our refuge be. Be Thou for us in life our daily bread, our hearts to
Welcome to worship at St. Giles Presbyterian Church. We're glad you've joined us for our virtual service today as we continue celebrating the season of Easter. If this is your first time with us, we especially welcome you. We do hope that all who participate today will sense the grace and presence of God as we worship. As you watch the service online, please feel free to participate in the chat column on the side and share words of welcome and celebration. Special thanks today to all who participated in the Mission Focus Point event last Sunday. The transition team will be publishing a summary soon. It's my pleasure to introduce to you our guest preacher for today, Elizabeth McGuire. The Reverend Elizabeth McGuire is originally from Wilmington, North Carolina, and grew up in her church home at First Presbyterian. She received her call to go into the ministry at the age of 12. Reverend Kathy Beach was one of her pastors during that time, and she credits her witness as part of her call story. After she completed her undergraduate degree at Queen's University in Charlotte, she went on to receive a Master of Divinity from Union Presbyterian Seminary, her dream school, in 2009. A month after graduating from Union, she married her husband, William, and by the end of the year, they were settled in Midlothian, Virginia, with their Black Lab, Carolina, and Elizabeth's first call to serve as the associate pastor of Salisbury Presbyterian. After serving at Salisbury for eight years, she and William decided it would work for her to stay at home full time with their two children, John Howell, eight, and Mariah, now four. Elizabeth continued to serve in various ways as a member at large of the Presbytery of the James in Virginia. Her family was then called to move back to North Carolina so William could start a brand new business and she could continue to stay at home with John Howell and Mariah and serve the church however it needed her. Their home is in Holly Springs, North Carolina and they attend the Kirk of Holly Springs, a new faith community within the Presbyterian Church, USA. She is excited to join New Hope Presbytery this summer and see where God leads her next. Please join me in the call to worship. In your wisdom, O God, you call us here to worship you. We gather alive to the word of God. You call us to be fully alive with your life abundant, ready to listen and respond with heart, soul, strength, and mind. We listen alive to the word of God. You call us to be always watchful for your word of wisdom, sometimes startling and unexpected, sometimes still and quiet but always dwelling among us. We watch and wait 
for the word of God. Good morning. I like this list of attributes of St. Giles. There's a lot here in a few words. I'm gonna focus us for a couple of minutes on our serving and our engaging by talking about the missions work of the church. Now, when you teach Sunday school, sing in the choir, attend a fellowship dinner, or just help each other out and care for each other, you're doing the church's missions. I'm going to highlight our outward missions to the local community and to the world. And there's a lot of those that we do. For more than 30 years, our members have helped deliver meals through Meals on Wheels, offering food and a smile to the homebound. For more than a decade, every year, we have built alongside Habitat for Humanity and other, Presbyter other Presbyterian churches, uh, affordable housing here in Raleigh, and that work continued this year. On April 28th, a new home uh, that benefited from our church's financial donations will be dedicated and uh, inhabited by another family. And we've stood shoulder to shoulder and side by side in our fellowship hall, packaging food with Rise Against Hunger to deliver thousands of meals worldwide. And those are just a few while the hands-on mission work has been slowed because of the pandemic, uh, I hope you know that your donations to the church have made financial contributions possible to all three of the missions that I just mentioned, Habitat for Humanity, Rise Against Hunger and Meals on Wheels, and others, including the Pastors Discretionary Fund, which offers the resources to provide food and help with electric bills to our neighbors in times of need, your gifts also support Presbyterian Campus Ministries, Raleigh Urban Ministries, and Step Up Ministries. 
While the pandemic has indeed caused us to change some of our plans, it's opened new doors as well. Since December, we have welcomed back uh, the YMCA Community Hope Program to our campus. And every weekday since then, children from the Raleigh Gardens community have been able to get help with their online learning and enriching activities uh, right here in our youth center. So there is a lot going on with missions at St. Giles with more to come. Uh, I look forward to hearing what it, mission work that you're involved in, what it is that makes your heart sing about missions and encourage you to share those stories with each other until we're back together. Thanks. Our first scripture today is from the book of Psalms, Psalm 4, and this is a Psalm of David. Answer me when I call, O God of my right. You gave me room when I was in distress. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, you people, shall my honor suffer, suffer shame? How long will you love vain words and seek after lies? But know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. When you are disturbed, do not sin. Ponder it on your beds and be silent. Offer right sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. There are many who say, oh, that we might see some good. Let the light of your face shine upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when their grain and wine abound. I will both lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O Lord, make me lie down in safety. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us come before God to confess our sins. We know that nothing is able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. Let us in freedom confess the wrong we have done. Whether we can gather as one today or feel we need to stay apart, whether we continue to huddle in the shadows and take tentative steps into the light, on this day we come to you, fear-removing God. We would like to think we have been so distant from you that you have not noticed our foolishness. During the last months, we have kept the door to hope shut so tight, afraid to open it. So eager to go back to before this pandemic year began, we are hesitant to trust in the future you hold out to us. Yet as persistent as Mary at the tomb, joy of our hearts, you come to open the gates of hope so we might walk in the gardens of life. You come to open the gates of grace so we might plant peace in the wilderness of the world you come to open the gates of resurrection so we might know our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now hear the assurance of God's pardon. God the Creator brings us new life, forgives and redeems us. Let us take hold of this forgiveness and live our lives in the spirit of of Jesus. Amen. Good morning. Um, I'd like to take this time to invite all the children and those at Young Heart to come a little closer to the screen. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. How are you, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. Good. Um, so today's scripture talks about um, us being the children of God. Um, what does that mean to you? Um, I think it means you should appreciate God because you actually 
he made all this for us, so you should um, appreciate him a lot, because without him, we would not be here. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Bella? I think it is like, so I think he gave us all of this food to be made, and I think he also did this. This is my body, and this is my blood. Oh, yeah, like communion? So, like, he gave us his son. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a good thought of why we're the children of God. Yeah, so we're all children of God, um, and that we should, we should, um, like, give praise for that, right? And we should be, um, happy and, and joyous in that, right? And we can help remember that we're children of God by doing communion. Like Isla was saying, and like, wow, those are some good answers. Um, so it also goes on to talk about um, about sin and how um, we can we are we are forgiven. So, do you know what sin is, Paisley? Uh, yes, I do. It actually means that you uh, did something wrong that you weren't supposed to do, and you, yeah, that's what it means. Something, you do something wrong. Is that, Isla, what do you think sin is? Isla? What do you think sin is? I think sin is, um, about having people doing not very good stuff and breaking the law. Oh, okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. And so, what does, um, so the scripture says about it is that we um we need we are forgiven for our sins because of Christ, but um we also need to try our best not to sin, right? Um so that, that way um we can glorify God as our as our Savior. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's say a little prayer. Um uh, repeat after me. Alright? Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your son, thank you for your son who died on the cross, who died on the cross, and forgave us of our sins, and forgave us for our sins. Thank you for thank you for communion, so that we can remember him, so that we can remember him, and thank you for. Making us all, and thank you for making us all your children. Your children. Amen. 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 Thank you, and have a great day. Listen now to the word of the Lord brought to us from First John chapter three, verses one through eight. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Everyone who commits sin is a child of the devil, for the devil has been sinning from the beginning. The Son of God was revealed for this purpose to destroy the works of the devil. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. Growing up, I always remember hearing these words proclaimed at baptism. I remember my pastor at the time, Ernie Thompson, holding a newly baptized child, normally a baby, 
walking him or her up and down the long aisle of the church, everyone craning their necks so that they could catch a glimpse of that cute little face, which may have been crying, laughing, or sleeping. Ernie would talk about how God loved us before we could ever love God back. And he would always end with these words from 1 John that we've heard this morning. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And so indeed we are. I remember uttering the same words when I baptized a child for the first time as an ordained pastor. I remember holding back tears as those words rang out when each of my children were baptized. I knew I wouldn't be able to make it through if I tried to baptize my own child, so another beloved pastor did it for me. While I stood aside as the earthly parent and heard words proclaiming the gospel truth that my child had been created by God, loved by God, and claimed by God as God's own. For those of us who may feel that rush of the Holy Spirit in a moment of baptism, we may be faced with some of the same questions and ponderings of those who first considered these early words of the church from 1 John. Now, while we don't know who actually wrote this book, which tends to read more like a sermon rather than a letter, scholars do think that its message was intended for the same faith community of the time of the writer of the gospel according to John. So it makes sense for us to consider the words and interpretations of God's, John's gospel as we read this text from 1 John. Last Sunday, many preachers preached on John chapter 20 and the story of the resurrected Jesus who appeared to his disciples and Thomas in particular. In that text, we read what John's main purpose was in writing the gospel. He says that he wrote these words so that those who read it might come to believe, so that those who read it might believe. Its whole message is one that really focuses on how Jesus was not some ordinary man, but was God incarnate, God made flesh. The divinity of Christ is a main point of the gospel of John. We all learn that in seminary. We hear it as it is preached from the pulpit. So it would have been a highly deliberated tenet of faith for those who were hearing these words of 1 John, the divinity of Christ. This faith community would have been dedicated to reading the scriptures, praying together, and would necessarily have discussions about who Jesus really was and how a relationship with a resurrected Christ is this new idea of a Holy Spirit lived out. It seems from the text that there was some level of schism among the community, and it seems there might have been a disagreement as to whether Jesus was fully human and fully divine at the same time. They would have focused more on the divinity of Christ versus the humanity. But the author here is trying to bring this faith community back to the gospel truth that brought them together in the first place, which is that Jesus is God made flesh and is now resurrected, prompting the belief that we now have eternal life. The section that we read this morning starts off with a strong illustration of how we are connected to God and how we are in relationship with God. We are a family. Love is also a huge theme throughout the text of 1 John. Love, which it says is from God. Love, which it says is God. And it is this love that makes us children of God. I think this is a powerful and beautiful message to consider, especially in this Easter season. For resurrection is the ultimate promise that God offers throughout scripture, a promise not only of life eternal, but eternal life in God's presence, face to face. The gospel message is where our hope and our faith get the energy and the strength that they need. The message here in 1 John then is one that seeks to address how we may fit into this promise of resurrection. Where do we fit in? We read about how we fit in to being made part of the family. But this is not just 
changing our last name as we might do when we join a family or moving into a new home. But this is a complete transformation when we join in the family of God. We are still us at our core, created and loved by God, but we transform into belonging in a new way. A metaphor that's used throughout the New Testament is that of adoption. Now, in the early first century Rome, adoption was less about giving young orphans a home, and it was more about becoming part of a new family's inheritance and letting go of any debts from your family of birth. For the person adopted, their old family no longer matters considering any burdens or negative associations that might be carried from them. Now that they are adopted, they are received as part of a new family and they will carry on a new inheritance, a new name, a new identity to live a new life. This is the illustration that the author of First John uses to help show us how far God's love goes. Because God loves us, we are part of God's family and all the beautiful, righteous goodness that comes with it. Another piece that I appreciate about this text is that the author doesn't just woo us with poetic love language because there are some beautiful pieces about what love is in 1 John. But we face the reality, this life that we live, which includes sin. Now, it's not clear why the author is so harsh in pointing out the sins of this community. We don't know if maybe the people in this faith community thought it was okay to sin over and over again because Jesus had forgiven all of their sins. Jesus had conquered death. We don't know if maybe the folks in this community were adhering to to the cultural Hellenistic belief of Gnosticism, which says, as long as your thoughts are pure, You can do whatever you want on the outside. So we don't know why sin comes up in this text. But bottom line, it reminds us that we still sin. And if Christ is our beacon and our hope, then we would do well to to recognize when we sin, to recognize that this sinful part of us is not part of God. We are not claimed by our sin by the ways that that we separate ourselves from God, but rather we are God's children. We are ultimately part of this new family, this new relationship, this new covenant that is sealed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Our identity is no longer held in bondage to sin, but we have been set free to love and to share this good news that we are assured of deep within our souls. We are being called to align our allegiance with this truth, this new family, and not to the reality of sin. So there is this one level in the text of understanding what it means to belong to God. We belong to God in a very personal and intimate way, a way by which we may experience the Holy Spirit in ways that we personally can only know. We belong to God as a child, as God is our parent, our creator, our redeemer, and our sustainer. But then there is this other level of belonging that involves you and me. As the church, as the body of Christ, as the community of faith, which God has called together, we are family too. We are bonded not only by our earthly relationships, but we are bonded by our shared relationship with the resurrected Christ. And this connection, friends, it's extended way beyond St. Giles Presbyterian, but God claims us children over all of creation. Because of Jesus Christ and the new eternal relationship promised with God, we are also promised an eternal relationship with each other as fellow created members as shared members within the church. One experience that I have carried with me for almost 20 years happened in Iquitos, Peru. I traveled there on a mission trip with a few members of my church, and we had the honor of working alongside members of a small community in Iquitos, which is located at the mouth of the Amazon River. This community supported different villages that were situated along the Amazon. 
One of our few nights there, I met a boy named Nani who worked with the Peruvian mission group that we had connected with. I'm I'm ashamed to say that I did not speak much Spanish then and maybe even more ashamed that I still don't. But yet within a few moments of meeting Nani, he started desperately trying to say something to me. Finally, someone translated for him to say, I am Nani, I am your brother, and I love you. He shared the same sentiment with our pastor who traveled with us. She had already been to the same community before. He remembered her. She remembered him. She too was a sister. We had only met, just met, and yet the Holy Spirit decided to properly introduce us. I actually still stay connected to Nani. We're able to see each other through Facebook. And I don't even know if he remembers that moment. I hope that he does, but I know that God remembers. Through words like these that we have heard this morning from 1 John, we can see the beauty of God's family throughout our lives. And we don't only see moments of Christ's love, we also see sin, as the author of 1 John reminds us. We are not perfect. We sin and we repent and we sin again and we repent again. God's people have existed in this cycle of falling away and coming back to God since the beginning of time. But in this moment, with the news of the resurrected Christ now permeating almost over a decade or more, it breaks the cycle in such a way that allows for a new hope and a new life through Christ. Their journey of the people of God has led them to this moment, has led us to this moment, A moment Jesus was promising all along, a new covenant, a new relationship, a new kind of faith that is powered by God's Holy Spirit in a transformative way. God ushered in life through every moment of creation. God's creation moved and changed, sinned and repented, fought with each other, reconciled with each other, believed in God and abandoned God all the while clinging to the words brought down by prophets and stories of fantastical religious experiences. This is our journey of faith. This journey in our faith and in our sin has brought us not only to a renewed hope in what is to come, but it's a hope in what we have and what we can see now, right here in our midst. Yes, we still sin every day. I think sometimes we sin without realizing it, it's such a part of our human life. But at the same time, God is also moving through a spirit of love that is actively transforming creation, purposefully molding creation and renewing it to the, to the resurrected right along with Jesus. While we might be part of this world, we are more importantly part of God's kingdom, of God's family. The love of God is sure and strong. The late David Bartlett, who I've loved over the years in his writings and his theological thoughts, shares a powerful and comforting statement when considering this particular love that God has for us. He says, having loved us to the end, surely we can believe that God loves us beyond the end as well. See what love God has for us, that we should be called children of God. And so indeed we are. God loved us all the way to the cross, through the suffering, through death, and that love continued through the power of resurrection. This astonishing love is what confirms our place in God's family. And it is this same love that makes you and me siblings, family. May we see this love in ourselves. May we see it in each other. May we see it through every piece of God's creation. And may it continue to transform us as God sees fit. Amen.
the time of prayer, let us turn now to God and let us pray. Gracious God, we have journeyed through the shadows of Holy Week and have come to face that beautiful morning of Easter, which revealed the astounding light and life of resurrection. O Lord, we marvel at your goodness and love which shine abundantly around us, around us in this season of Easter. While we are assured of a holy life promised through the resurrection, and while we have the honor of catching those holy moments of you in our midst, life has yet to be perfected. We are called to be part of two kingdoms, the kingdom of heaven and this kingdom of earth, which struggles day in and day out in the midst of pain, suffering, injustice, and the realities of sin and its consequences. Therefore, we offer up sincere prayers for peace to interrupt those who oppress the other, those who overpower the masses with their greed, those who forget their place and harm their neighbor. We pray for those facing loss after loss, those suffering the loss of a precious loved one, the loss of livelihoods, the loss of material comforts, the loss of normality. We pray for a healing balm to comfort those who are sick, those who lie in hospital beds and wait alone, those whose minds are riddled with anxiety and hearts that are weighed down with depression. Send the helpers, O God. Surround those in need with those who can help and can soothe and can heal. We pray for the conflict and the unrest which plagues communities all over the world, our country, and our hometowns. While we know we are not perfect, yet we pray for all of your creation to be able to see with love, work for peace, rest in hope, and look forward with faith. O oh Lord, prayer is such a gift, and we ask that your Holy Spirit might intercede for us in these days. We ask now in a few moments of human silence that your spirit might attend to each of us and our particular needs. Let us calm our minds and hearts now for a few moments and help us to offer up what we need in that silence. And may we feel or even hear you in return. And now with the voices of the people of God who span your creation, let us join together praying the words our Lord Jesus Christ taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Shines in. 
is my Father's work. Oh, let me never forget that though the wrong seems up so strong, God is the satisfied and earth and heaven be one my friends as we leave each other this morning may we continue on with courage hold fast to that which is good respond to no person evil for evil strengthen the faint-hearted support the weak honor all people Love and serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the love of the Lord our God, the peace of our Lord and Savior, and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always to the end of the age. Amen. Thank mm-hmm. you.